Today I'm going to be talking about the easiest to hardest bosses in Neo 2 and I have to say that this is probably the hardest video that I've had to make. Uh, it's not only taken a lot of time going through each individual boss, working out which ones were the easiest, which one the hardest, and kind of ranking them. Uh, really, really difficult, but then also gaining the footage, editing it all together, and of course trying to give uh, very clear and concise opinions for you all because you know at the end of the day these are my views and my experiences throughout the game and I know that there's going to be a lot of you that are going to say oh no that boss was much harder than this one and this one was ranked differently and I fully respect any opinions that people have um, you know and that, I want to see the comments below about what bosses gave you the most trouble because there's going to be different ones guaranteed now I use dual swords throughout um, and that will be partly the reason based on my rankings as well to some of the difficulties um, and things that I had um, but if you do like the video if you found it um, informative useful interesting um, and kind of just generally fun uh, then please do spend the time to at least put a like on the video that would really help me out if you want to subscribe for future content amazing that would be absolutely brilliant really really would be appreciated and of course any comments and top fives and what you found difficult would be absolutely perfect as well right without further ado let's get into the video and let's start off with the boss of number 24 from the main missions mission bosses only yes we're gonna do it okay so of course we are gonna start off with William and there's not much to say about him he throws out just random attacks that aren't even near you he is a human he's kind of not even really a full boss I mean because you don't even have to fully kill him uh, you just have to do a certain amount of damage and then it cuts to a kind of a film strip so that's pretty much why I'm ranking him as 24 as the easiest boss but you have to say that the film strip is of course pretty damn cool I do like this uh, right okay so the next one then of course at uh, number 23 is gonna be Ignamawa Yosamoto um, again another human uh, he's very predictable in the kind of attacks he has fires lightning arrows which you can guard uh, he's a human so you can shoot him down and you can of course do extra damage um, and his first attack with the elephant is quite easily avoided um, he's a very straightforward and simple boss so I'm not going to spend too much time describing him because that's why he sits at number 23 so the next one then of course at 22 is going to be Tokachiro again another human uh, very easy to kind of bully um, I had an AI with me on the second run I didn't have the first original footage unfortunately and I had an AI with me just to speed run it through uh, he's very predictable very easy to bully doesn't really scare you too much and kind of just does very dual swordy attacks a couple of flame attacks maybe but there's not anything really to be that worried about in regards to how he is uh, so that is why of course he ranks at number 22 uh, so yeah so that's that one so the next one then of course in a second coming up is of course uh, Tokichiro in his uh, yokai form which he is going to be then of course uh, number 21 Again, very uh, straightforward. I mean, a little harder than the human form, I would say, but does some fire attacks, which could do a bit of damage. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the original footage of this one, so I had to go and redo it. And of course, it's trying to, you know, just do it without killing them, like pretty much in about one hit. Uh, he does a couple of burst attacks and fire attacks, which can do a bit of a damage, but again, not much of a challenging boss. So that's why he sits, of course, at number 21. Uh, for myself there and yeah I mean it's like anything you know these bosses I did find them very very straightforward uh, number 20 uh, this would be Sayoto Yushutatsu now uh, it does seem to vary a little bit on depending on which uh, you know yokai form or shift form you, you chose at the start it does look like the uh, phantom form gives you a little bit more trouble which actually is the one I selected so it wasn't really that difficult but again pretty straightforward and not much else to say so that's why he sits at number 20 uh, right okay so the number 19 would be a good old uh, teenage turtle ninja angry man looks like an angry Scott um, with a big turtle shell on the back 
um, and that would be Kuroko. Uh, again, he jumps around a bit, he uses uh, Kamatachi to kind of spin around and do damage and stuff. Pretty cool looking boss, if I'm honest. I like the animations and the things. He does do a massive uh, WWE ch choke slam on you, which is pretty cool. But otherwise, he's not really much to worry about. I beat him on my first time and found him very, very easy indeed. Uh, so yeah, so that is why he sits at number 19. So the next one. Uh, now this would be, of course, uh, the cat whipping, wheels wielding, fire breathing, well, whatever. Uh, of course, uh, Kasha. Now again with her... I beat her for my first time, I found her very easy, she's very very um, subject to poison actually, um, her attacks seemed quite easy to kind of avoid, the fires were a little bit like, mm, at times, but I wasn't so much worried about kind of like, that she was going to kill me a lot of the time, um, and that was the thing, I know a lot of people had trouble with her, or some people did, um, and I, again, I suppose it was probably just down to build and armor set up and things. But I just didn't find her actually as challenging. Because, you know, apart from the fire, which was the big thing that could do a lot of damage if it hit you. Um, the spinning wheel attack was a bit of a pain. Uh, I couldn't really burst counter that. Um, but she's a pretty cool looking boss. I really love the animations. I love the design. And just, yeah, what, what a, a cool looking boss. Um, absolutely amazing job from uh, the guys who created, um, of course, Neo 2. So a big thumbs up. But uh, as I found him, found her quite easy. Uh, that is the reason why uh, she sits, of course, at number 18 for me. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was her. Now, of course, at number 17, then is of course the boss that you find in the demo. Uh, I think this boss is awesome. He looks so cool, but as a boss to fight. Though he could give you a little bit of trouble here and there, you know, if you allowed him to, um, you know, run on top. The splitting into two and then uh, having like a different one could catch you off guard, but he was a little bit easier because yes, one, I fought him in the demo, and two, um, of course, I didn't find him too hard either way, but he is such a cool looking boss. And, you know, although you've got to be careful with any of these bosses in Neo, uh, or Neo 2, should I say, I did find that he was a bit of more of a straightforward one, as long as you just watch for those burst counters. Those burst counters I found really hard actually to uh, burst counter. That was the the most challenging part. Um, and like I said, you know, the split part. Well, I mean, again, you get quite used to that, and you just watch for the one that's in the middle. Uh, so yeah, so that is why, of course, that Kamatachi uh, would sit at number 17 out of the main mission bosses that I fought. But he is a really cool boss, and uh, I definitely thumbs up on the design and everything else. Uh, so, okay, now this one is, of course, uh, Shooting Doji. Now, he sits at number 16, uh, the Drunkard Yokai. He is really cool. Um, but, you know, he was kind of slow, he did breathe fire. Kind of seemed quite predictable. I didn't really find him not impossible. I mean, he was tricky a couple of moments. I mean, you can see my life bar was quite low there. Um, and it was a little bit touch and go, but to be honest, I wasn't really, I don't know, he just didn't make me feel like he was in a worry. I mean, yeah, he breathes fire and everything else, but he walks really slow, so I just found I could just finish him off uh, with the hand cannon, and then I just literally ran up to him and uh, finished him off. So that is why, of course, he six at uh, number 16. Good boss, though. Pretty cool. Uh, this one may surprise you. So number 15, Oki Maru. Now, this was a really hard one to kind of rank, and it may surprise a lot of you being that this was the last boss. And, yeah, it kind of surprises me that I had to place him here, and I really had to think about this guy. Very, 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 very tricky to rank. But, you know, he took my... well, he took second attempt, I beat him. I, I only died the first because I made a mistake, and I really shouldn't have. He did a big kind of pull, like, burst thing, and he just ripped off my life. That was it. Um, so, I mean, he can kill you. He's definitely a challenge, and uh, I wasn't ridiculously over-leveled or anything like that. Um, but that is why he's probably the biggest surprise of all the bosses that I did rank him. But again, an amazing design and such a, a cool boss. Um, they've done such a, a fantastic job with the game. I would give them a 10 out of 10 for this. And the animation fight at the end, what a cool-looking uh, animation. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's why he would sit at uh, number 15. Uh, so number 14 is the next one, and of course, it may not surprise you to uh, say it's Diadra Boki. 
again, this boss is pretty cool. Um, massive boss, you have to trim his toenails. Uh, he fires an Umibuzu uh, eye laser, if you uh, know that uh, reference from Neo 1. Uh, but you can duck behind his hand to actually block it. Uh, he does do big unblockables, uh, which is a bit of a pain to avoid occasionally. Um, but you have to kind of just rinse and repeat damaging the uh, yokai uh, kind of toenail or fingernails or whatever you want to call them uh, to of course uh, you know knock him down then and it's just a case of rinsing and repeating so I didn't find this guy uh, ridiculous I didn't find him uh, the easiest boss otherwise he would be ranked lower uh, but you know apart from a couple of attacks which could be a little bit troublesome I mean the rock falling is eh, you know it's the kind of wave thing that hits me there that could be a little bit annoying and um, it did take a couple of attempts to kind of beat him um, and that was purely because actually I wasn't ducking behind the hand to be fair initially for the eye laser which I should have been uh, but yeah I mean you literally once you stun him into kind of like a, a complete stamina drain you run up and of course uh, you take him out as regards to that uh, so that is why he ranks at number 14 for me as regards to the next boss now number 13 Riemann Sukana. Um, this one you fought in the demo, so I guess that was partly why. Uh, it only took me a couple of attempts to beat him. Um, he did have a bit of a change in the animations, uh, so again with him, he could actually take you by surprise. He had like a burst arrow uh, sort of attacks. Uh, he fired a lot of uh, different things, and he did take me by surprise the first time. I wasn't expecting a couple of the, the slight changes, but the fundamental boss remained the same. Um, and of course it is a case of, you know, because I was wearing uh, light armor, I was quick, I was using dual sword, I could do the, um, you know, sign of the cross attack, roll away, and then just continue doing it. Um, and he is one of those kind of bosses that was just not as hard, probably because I had fought him in the demo. I know that there had been people that have had trouble with him, so I don't expect him to be, um, you know, maybe as high or as low as you would call it on a lot of people's list, but he wasn't like uh, but again, a really cool design boss, split in half ways, what could you say? Uh, so that is why he ranks at number 13 for me. Uh, really cool though. Okay, so number 12, uh, Goyuki, the bull cow spider boss. <laughs> again, what an awesome design. Um, this guy, how can I put it? He basically had a big weakness, but he is huge in size. Uh, you could dunk underneath him and you could do damage to him and he couldn't really do a great deal. Uh, his feet were at the back were weaknesses so you could take them out to sort of stagger him um, and of course like anything there as long as you were kind of just rolling out of the way when he did the kind of big jump attack um, stayed out of the way of the poison gas and the burst attack that he did um, then of course uh, this made it a little easier. Now, he is one of those ones where if you don't pay attention, he could kill you, most 100% done. Um, but, he was one that I found not too bad once I was actually focused on the game. Uh, but again, the design with the wings and everything else, such an amazing part. And the animation at the end when you uh, defeat him is really cool as well. But that is why he sits at number 12 for me um, on my list. So we're halfway through now. Now, number 11 then, uh, this would of course be Megara Niataka. Now, this was a really tricky one to rank because I actually beat him on my second attempt. And I actually died more to Goyuki, surprisingly. So you go, why did you rank him higher? Well, the reason being is because I beat him on the second attempt, but it really was very close. Uh, he has an Odachi, he does big rain swings, he's quite quick, deceptively quick I would say. Uh, he has a lot of hard hitting attacks, his burst counters are quite tricky, uh, that grab can do ridiculous damage, um, and just he is deceptively harder than I think uh, people give credit for, considering he's a region 3 boss. Um, and he is one that you've just got to be so careful of. If you're not guarding, if you're like stopping for a moment, just like I did there, that's half a life gone. And then he can do the grapple, that would have been dead if he'd have caught me. And that is how easy it is to, to die. And, and literally, uh, when I sort of like played it back again and watched the, the footage that I had from the original playback, I thought, you know what, this was actually very much close. I had to burst counter this big attack. Um, and then I had to kill him. It was very, very close. But he was a really cool boss to fight. So we're now to the top 10. Uh, so this one again, uh, as I 
hit really tricky to kind of rank. Um, I did originally have him a little higher because I found him actually a bit of a pain, mainly in the Dark Realm with the burst attacks. Um, but when I sort of looked at it back, I thought, you know, he isn't so bad. I just had to kind of be aware of things like that where it could just do a lot of damage uh, and kill you. He's quite quick though, um, and I think that again is a deceptive uh, part. He could do a lot of damage. Um, he, those little spike things that could uh, slow you down were a little tricky. And I found that, you know, Poison, although it did work, it didn't unfortunately do maybe as much damage as I would have liked. Now, I was running a Poison Yatsu build for pretty much most of the game. Um, Yatsu unfortunately got nerfed for me halfway through, so it didn't work as effectively, but however, um, it's still the same principle. But yeah, I mean, as long as you're avoiding those big burst counters, um, dodging the attacks, and kind of just doing the damage, I found also that he was very, very subject to the Yokai shift, uh, which was kind of like the big reason as well to cut into it and just smash him down with this. And that was why he is ranked at uh, number 10. Pretty cool though. Uh, number 9, it will not surprise you to see the uh, Yokai Pig Boy uh, in action. He is lethal. Um, and this guy actually only took me. Uh, three attempts. On well, my third attempt I beat him um, and it was a very hard boss again to rank because again his fundamentals were pretty tough for a boss. Um, he had big swing attacks, high damage, big charges, things that could do a lot of kai uh, drain. Literally like if you weren't paying attention he could destroy you. I mean look at the damage from that charge. Yes, I mean, I found out afterwards you could actually destroy the tusks to stop it, but if you don't know that, how are you going to deal with him? Um, he literally had it all. And this, I know, is a lot of people's bosses at number one. He couldn't be mine because I didn't find him as hard as that. But, however, I did find magic stopped his charge as well, so that was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, you had to kind of just be so careful on the way he was. Uh, the Yokai shift just didn't really work against him. He destroyed that in a matter of seconds. And of course, it was a little bit scary at one point where I had to burst counter him. And I'm like thinking, my god, okay. But again, one of those bosses that this could have gone either way, especially here um, where he could have killed me. He didn't. But if he had of, could it have taken more attempts? That's why I placed him uh, at number nine on my list. But again, amazing amazing boss and very fun to fight uh, right so of course we are now on number eight and that is not going to surprise people the Tatari Moki uh, this was a recorded footage not from the original battle unfortunately didn't have this one uh, so I tried to capture in essence what he could do which was a big burst counter I couldn't burst counter that at all it was horrible uh, the first time round just didn't do it um, Literally, he does a lot of fast attacks. He moves, again, quite quickly. Uh, so kind of like uh, that Megara and the attacker, very deceptively fast. Uh, does a fair bit of damage uh, when he can attack. And, of course, uh, things like you know putting him into the Dark Realm or putting you into the Dark Realm is probably that bit where a lot of people panic. Now, I didn't because I'd seen it earlier in the game with the Red Globes, but at the end of the day, trying to destroy one that was still hard because he's attacking you at the same time um, and although this doesn't really give a demonstration of it fully because you know he's not doing a lot less damage when you have a little more damage uh, as a nightmare I also didn't know that he sort of like dropped down uh, the eye laser was of course uh, could catch you out because he could be his back turned and have to spin around with his head uh, to actually attack you and that was kind of like not a lot of fun to, uh, to deal with uh, he flew in the air which I hated because my tracking just couldn't handle it um, and of course I found that a bit of a pain um, so although I wouldn't say that actually surprisingly enough I actually beat him on about I think it was my fourth attempt um, and I should have beaten him my first actually it was really scary I just didn't know that he um, could um, do that the big peck attack is of course uh, the other one that uh, is no fun if you're on the receiving end but that is why of course he is ranked and uh, number eight. Number seven, Maida Toshiel. Um, this one was a tricky one to rank again because uh, he's the kind of boss that, you know, when you fight him on the first time, uh, that's what I took into account, not the submission. He's very quick. Uh, he could do big damage. He could dodge your attacks. He was a bit 
of an awkward one to, to fight. Now, to be fair, this one I, I beat him on a roundabout, I believe it was my third attempt. Um, and it is just things like that attack, that exact attack, not guarding it, getting too greedy, overextending, um, allowing him to you know play his game and not yours. Um, and it really, 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 like with dual swords, you know, because you've got a lack of range, you've got to be in close combat. And sometimes that could be a bit awkward. He wasn't that subject to poison, uh, surprisingly. Um, and that kind of was a bit of a bugger as well. He did get affected, but I found that it didn't work as effectively. So part of my build was not as, as good against him. Um, but he's a very, very, very one that you have to kind of watch for the swings. The spear had a lot of range. Um, if you just took a moment where you could just, I don't know, pause to kind of, you know, lose tracking like I did there where my auto lock uh, kind of changed. Next minute, you know, he's stabbing you in the back with his spear. Um, and just the dodge like that as well, you know, he could give you a run for your money. Um, he was a hard one to kind of place for this reason, uh, but I did think he definitely deserved a top 10 spot. And I know that, well, he gave a lot of people some trouble. So, uh, again, you know, a tricky boss, had to be patient, had to kind of watch for things, but he was beatable. And that was the whole point, really. Um, you know, but like anything, uh, a really, really, really intense fight. Um, so yeah, so moving on to number six, and I've put Mizuki and Gozuki together. Now it's only because you find them in the Golden Tower, or Golden Castle, should I say. Um, Kazuki, you don't really fight as a boss necessarily, but Mizuki, I found him a little bit more awkward. He's got a massive range with that club thing that he has. Uh, Kazuki, not so much, although you do fight him as the first time in the um, sort of game. Um, and I did find that, like with anything, uh, they could give you a little bit of trouble. Now, Mizuki is deceptively tricky for the first boss, I found. Now, um, I think he kind of reminds me of Onwa Yuki from the first game. Um, I wasn't very familiar with the Neo setup, but I haven't played Bloodborne or Dark Souls, so uh, for me, Neo 1 was a lot more harder. Uh, Neo 2, I was a little bit rusty, uh, but you know, when I sort of played and, and sort of came across, he fires the little blobules out, which, okay, you could duck behind the heart on the original level, um, but when you sort of like, you look at it, you think, well, okay, you know, that's not that bad, but he did say it sort of have deceptively a much more range than I would have expected. Uh, the charge was annoying because, again, like Kazuki, he had a kind of seemingly a homing kind of element to him, where it just seemed to home in no matter what. Um, and there was a lot of guarding, a lot of patience. And I must say that my burst countering, my blocking, uh, my timing was nowhere near as good, um, sort of like early on in the game. I mean, it's maybe not so good in, in this. Uh, sort of clips necessarily but um, that was why I ranked him at number six and yeah I mean like you fight them a lot once you've got practice he's easy but initially yeah definitely a kind of a, a challenging boss for that first boss in the game and you'll see a kind of like a, a you know a kind of a pattern with this with regards to rankings but anyway that is why he ranks at the top six bosses for me top five Lady Osabi or Okasabi Reason I found this boss tricky? Uh, well, okay, there's only one reason really. I was using dual swords. If I'd have been using the Yodachi or a spear, I don't think this boss would have even been in the top 10 necessarily. But for me, I did find it much more tricky because I just couldn't easily get close to the heads. I tried to beat them out um, regard to the burst counter, uh, which was fine. But as you can see there, look at the damage I can't do. And this is where I struggled just to get that damage in to knock those heads so that I could then do damage to the final boss. And that is why I use Yatsu there, just to take that head down and kind of remove it and then go on to the last one. Now there is a like two, then four in the last second phase in the Dark Realm. And I didn't find that part too tricky. The laser was a bit um, awkward and I got lasered a couple of times when I wasn't concentrating on it. Uh, the little fireballs and the burst countering was a bit awkward. Um, I mistimed it a couple of times. Um, I maybe I got too close, I think, and I took damage, but damaged it. Whereas that's why I found standing back. As you can see, what I'm trying to do is bait out uh, the sort of like the burst counter or the red attack, shall we call it? Um, but I didn't manage necessarily. 
Now I'm dodging lots of fireballs, I was trying just to get this one down so I could defeat this boss because I did find this one uh, hard for those reasons and as you can see there yeah, I take damage and that was really really awkward because of course like anything I'm trying to just get um, the boss down to the final part but this was fortunately the first time that uh, the first playthrough so you do at least get a uh, full example of what happened uh, the boss once it collapses is nice and easy because of course you can just literally spin and do loads of damage but this is why Lady Osabi is at number five um, again a very a unique boss but maybe a little bit uh, reminiscent of the boss in Neo 1 at the end uh, but there you go, uh, one of those things. So number four, maybe it won't surprise you, maybe it will. Sayaka Magochi. Uh, so we fought him in Neo 1 for those who've uh, played him. Um, and I think what caught me off was probably that he had some changes. So in regards to how he played, yes, he's got similar attacks, but you haven't got some of the things that you maybe had before. Uh, he has some extra attacks like these heat seeking little flames. Um, some other things. You had to use the pillars. You had to dodge the fire. Um, yeah, I mean, like dodging cover was uh, probably the um, you know best way. Uh, but you can sort of see he fires out the rings. Um, you're dodging behind the pillars, but he could warp, so you'd lose the ultra track, so you wouldn't know where he was until you could lock back on. Um, and he could do big damage very, very quickly. Um, and he was a boss that did take me a few attempts to beat. And I had someone on Shareplay watching this, and they said, wow, this boss actually looks pretty tricky, but it's really entertaining. And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> entertaining for you. And I was getting well annoyed because it was frustrating me how many times, uh, you know, I was sort of like getting hit, shot out before I could shoot him. Uh, he's very quick on the draw. Yes, he's got three shots, uh, but he was one that you had to constantly try and avoid. Um, and that is why he's going to rank at number four. Um, but, you know, these bosses, I think they are set to try us. And this, don't forget, this is on the first playthrough uh, that I've done, which I didn't mention at the beginning, but of course it is the first playthrough. Uh, so I guess, like anything, it's a bit of a learning curve with regards to these bosses. Um, but he was one that you had to watch for. If you weren't careful, you could certainly uh, be killed, which I did discover uh, many times, especially things like that big flame attack. Um, and those heat seeking fires, I think he does like about two or three at one point and it's just a nightmare. Dodging the bullets wasn't so bad, um, you know, one of those things. Uh, but however, uh, that is why he, as I say, he ranks at number four for me. Now number three, I have to say this was probably the hardest one to rank because it became a toss up between number three and number two. Maybe it will surprise you that Enra is number three for me, but I think fundamentally there was two reasons. One, I had, um, I believe it was the Phantom Yokai Shift. So burst countering the tornado was more difficult for me and until I was able to change it, um, that was kind of what I had to use which gave me a bit of difficulty. Uh, he's also very quick with his attacks. Again, a deceptively large low yokai who is very quick at attacking. Now, once you understand his attack sequence, oh, it gets a lot easier. And, of course, you can break the pillars to kai drain him because the water falls on his head. However, uh, if you don't, um, of course, do that correctly or you don't kind of, like, respond or react quick enough, um, that is one of those things. Now, one thing I will say with certainly two of the bosses in the top three... Um, part of the reason why they rank so high is because you don't have the gear that necessarily you're going to use throughout the game. You don't have the skills, you don't have maybe the right weapons or the perfect weapon or the skills crafted to what you want. So you're in a very limited amount. Also you haven't got the magics, uh, you haven't got sloth, you haven't got um, all the builds, all the things that maybe you find uh, useful. So it is always going to make a difference in regards to the boss. Also, you're doing less damage on him. So straight away, they're doing more damage on you. You've got less health. And of course, Dark Realm absolutely destroys you. And I think this is probably the biggest thing. With the Dark Realm for the first few bosses, uh, especially the first three, I would say, they were very much more tricky. Uh, because you, you just literally, your Kai would be instantly drained guard a couple of things, you'd be staggered, uh, you didn't have things like quick-winded recovery, and of course this is why he ranks at number three for me, and I did die a fair few times to this boss, but he was pretty damn awesome, and I loved fighting him, and I love the music as well. Uh, so yeah, so that is why he ranks at number three for me, uh, as regards to my bosses. 
Now number two, uh, this was a toss up but it wasn't really, uh, Kashin Koji. I found him, uh, how can I put it, awkward. Uh, he wasn't as awkward as my boss at number one, but he was awkward and it did come very close between uh, Cash and Koji and of course uh, Enron. Like I said, it was really down to which one I thought was harder and the clones that uh, Cash and, uh, produces, you know, yeah, you could take them out with a Yatsu or just hit them, um, but it's the fact that he dies uh, twice. So you kill him, you're like, yeah, wicked, awesome, I use my quick scroll, um, I'll just kill him now, brilliant. And then you're like, oh, but he comes back alive. Luckily, I knew this from a previous experience. Um, unfortunately, I'd beaten him uh, the first time, and then the second phase, he'd killed me. So I knew this was coming. Uh, but yeah, you can see the damage. It's horrible. Uh, he gave me a lot, a lot of trouble. Uh, just for sort of like, uh, generally the heat-seeking flames, the poison clouds. The clones were annoying. Uh, yes, you could take them out, but... Um, you know, like anything, that wasn't always easy. Uh, the high damage grab, I think that is a big thing as well. You know, look at the damage he's doing to me. Uh, just literally just ripped off my life like you wouldn't believe. Uh, the homing little bubble blob things. Um, the kind of like the thing where he goes into the ground and does a great big slam. And his range as well. I mean, look at this, right? I literally had just done a quick scroll, luckily, and then I come back alive. Now, I do roll away to try and survive it. Luckily, I did. But, was he a pain? Yes. Was he hard? Definitely. Um, and he was one of those ones where I definitely don't think I thought I was necessarily going to beat him, even on the run that I actually did. Um, and that is purely because he was kind of like very fast, he has a lot of range, the burst counter wasn't too bad, but I don't risk it here. But you can see straight away, a lot of damage. Now, the only thing that really saved me necessarily was, of course, using uh, the Yokai Shift, which took a lot of damage um, and it killed him. So yeah, so that is it as regards to uh, my number two boss. So it only leaves the number one. And can you guess who it is? Did you guess the number one boss? Yes, it's the great big serpent Yatsu no Kami. Uh, I found this boss definitely horrific. It's probably the easiest explanation I could give. Uh, the Dark Realm was the living hell that uh, I couldn't, because I couldn't kill the snakes um, at being at the level I was at very easily. Um, the big grab was just a living nightmare, luckily didn't get me on this footage, uh, but however um, did on many other occasions. Now this is my first playthrough and this is my actually the, the time I beat her, but <laughs> no lie to say that uh, this was a very, very extremely tough boss. And probably reminds me of how they were in Neo 1. I did find a lot of the bosses easier uh, in Neo 2, to be fair. But I'm sure that, you know, subject uh, playthroughs, the new DLC coming out uh, end of July, all that will change it, I'm sure, no doubt. But she had, uh, how can I put it, a lot of ways to avoid my attacks, as you can see. Uh, she could rinse my damage, like the so. And that was kind of like scary as hell, just straight away. You're kind of like, all right, okay. She's weak to lightning. Did that help? Not really. Uh, well, it did, but not that much. Um, the Dark Realm, thank God, was over um, on that occasion, but you knew it was coming back, and I just thought, oh God, okay. He just got drained so hard. Now, the thing is, is that with the Jewel Sword, you're trying to, uh, you know, do a sort of like sign of the cross damage to take, uh, do damage to both uh, hands or arms or whatever to try and, of course, uh, destroy them both. Now, where it tended to really sort of fail for me is, is that, you know, I was always either too far away, and by the time you'd gone through the animation, you didn't really get uh, the damage. And, of course, this was the downside of having dual swords over, of course, uh, things like Spear and Amdachi, and I'm sure, no doubt, that would have made it a little easier. Uh, the Poison Cloud, not too bad. You could run over, and like I say, you could do the damage. But it was literally, you haven't unlocked the skills, you haven't unlocked a load of other things. Uh, the two snakes, either were very easy, like you could see in the first clip, or they could be horrific. Um, sometimes you wanted to try and shoot them, but I tried that many times and ended up being shot. Because again, you're not paying uh, much attention to the boss. And look at these little snakes, I mean, you're trying to kill them, and even they wouldn't die. So I was running around a lot of the time, I'm trying to avoid Yatsu, and I'm trying to take out the, of course, the snakes. And this proved very, very difficult, I thought. Now, I didn't have, of course, the Brute, um, sort of like, Yokai Shift at the time. 
I had the other one with the lightning. I'm sure it was a phantom. Um, so I think that was partly why. I mean, although the lightning damage at the end was nice, I definitely found this one very, very tricky indeed. The spears or the spikes, spines, whatever she fires out were a nightmare. The damage she uh, could do, just very tricky. But again, that was why this boss would rank most definitely at my number one for the hardest bosses in the game. So if you liked my video, if you found it uh, entertaining, informative, useful, and all that stuff, like I said, please drop a like and subscribe for future content, and drop comments below to say which bosses you found uh, the most hardest and the most tricky. But otherwise, that is it from me today, so you take care and have a great rest of the evening, day, or whatever. Nice one. Cheers now. Bye-bye.